So for the first question, a multiple of three. So from the list, I trace it through the multiplication table. So only 12 qualify as a multiple of three. Whereby for cube numbers, okay, out of all these numbers that they listed down, only eight qualify as a cube numbers because two to the power of three will be resulting in eight. For prime numbers, only five qualify for it because it can be divided by itself and one only. As for irrational numbers, I will be putting square root of seven as the irrational numbers because the square root 196 can be written as 14 and 3.56 can be written as a fraction. As for part two, okay, complete the stem and leaf diagram. For the first one over there, one you will have three five eight, two you will have one four six eight, three you will have six eight eight, and four you will have five and eight. So the tricky thing about this question is that you cannot include the comma, as well as there's two thirty eight there. Hence you are required to put two eight over at the stem and leaf diagram. Finding the median numbers of swimmers. So I trace it to the center. We'll be focusing at 26 and 28. So I add them both up, divide by two. Then you will get the results as 27. As for question three, so they are looking for column vector of A to B. So from A, the X will be at six, moving to two. So the difference is actually negative four. And for the Y part, it will be four to seven. So the difference will be three. So I list down the column vector, negative four will be at the top, which represent changes in X. And three will be at the bottom, which represent changes in Y. Question 4. Find the interior angles of a regular polygon with 24 sides. So I just take 180 bracket and minus 2. So this is for us to find the total interior angle. However, they only want the interior angle of it instead of total so i divided it with n so substitute 24 into n's position then you will get the results as 165 for question 5 here i change the divide into multiply by changing the original denominator into the numerator's position so same goes to the numerator, then it was changed to the denominator. 7 and 28 can be further simplified. So you get 15 times 1 over 4 times 4, which is 15 over 16. As for question 6, find the mean marks. I took the frequency multiplied by its respective marks. Then divide it with 40. So through this, you get a mean marks of 7.2. As for question 7, calculate the area of this right angle triangle. So base times height times half, you get your results as 45.9. As for part B, calculating the parameters. Aside from calculating the hypotenuse, Remember to add back the original base and height in order to satisfy the question of identifying the parameters. So I use this Pythagoras theorem. Okay, and through those, I managed to identify my hypotenuse sides as 13.7. So add it with 8.5 and 10.8. You should get your results as 33. 
Moving on to question 8. Okay, I simply key in this entire 2.3 times 10 to the power of negative 3 plus bracket 6.8 times 10 to the power of negative 4 into my calculator. And I get the results as 2.98 times 10 to the power of negative 3. As for 9a factorizing this, I extracted 3 and x from both of the variables there and gotten x minus 4y as the results in the brackets. As for part b, expand and simplify this. Okay, remember to multiply them correctly and you should get the results as m squared minus m minus 6. Question 10 here is actually a newly added part. So for the first one, sketching y equals to x minus 3, I draw out the box over there as you can see and I identify the x-intercept and y-intercept accordingly by setting x equals to 0. When x equals to 0, you get your y as negative 3 and when y equals to 0, you get your x as 3. And through this, I'm able to draw out the line. As for part B, it is y equals to 1 over x. So immediately you should know that x couldn't be 0 because when it's 0, then you have no results at all. This is why you notice the curve never intersect at 0, 0. So I listed down a couple of examples there. Okay, I set my x equals to 1, then I got my y as 1 as well. When my numbers increase, the y getting lesser and lesser. So through this, I know that it will be as shown as above. Question 11, shape A to shape B. So it is actually a rotation of anti-clockwise 90 degree from the center of rotation 0 2. So I trace this by roughly set out where could the point of rotation located at. Then I trace it using two rulers. For those who seen my previous video, you should be able to understand this. For those who couldn't, stay tuned. I'll be making a video specifically explaining how did I identify the center of rotation. As for part B, shape A onto shape C, this will be a reflection from the line y equals to x. As for part C, shape A onto shape D, this is actually a enlargement with a scale factor of 1 over 2 because D is actually shrinken okay, from the point 4, 6. Question 12. So keyword here for this question is actually decrease exponentially. So we will be using the compound formula and the variables that will key into my calculator is 250,000 times 100 minus 1.7% to the power of 5. So through this and correct it to nearest 100, you should get your answer as 229,500. Question 13, write the recurring decimal 0.26 as a fraction. You must show all your workings. So x equals to 0.26666 until infinity. So I set out a 10x equals to 2.666 and find their difference here. 9x will get your results of 2.4 and x will be 2.4 divided by 9. So your final answer for this will be 4 over 15. So question 14, this is actually a box and whisker, the newly added topic. So your first task is to write down the median. So you're required to look for the line at the center. So in our case, it will be 11.5. Find the range, basically look at the last line at the left hand and the right hand. So if the difference will be 14 minus 2, then you will get 12. 
and the interquartile range is actually the start and the end of the box. So 13.5 minus 5, then you will get 8.5 centimeters. Work out angle ABC given your reasons for your answer. So angle ABC is actually 116. Reason being, ACQ will be equivalent to ADC, which is the alternate segment theorem. And I will be using cyclic quadrilateral where angle ADC add up with ABC will be equals to 180. So 180 minus 64, then we get ABC's results as 116. And the detailed explanation that I write down into the paper will be as above. Question 16. So this is a simultaneous equation. So I couldn't explain much. However, I have already listed down the full details that I use to solve this question. If you've got any problem, feel free to leave your comment in the comment section. Then I will try to get back to you as soon as possible. But question 17, so they've given you the coordinates of A and B and they ask you to find the equation of the line perpendicular to AB and they gave you a very important information which is it will pass through point A. So my first thing to do is to identify my original gradient line. Okay, through 3, 5 and 1, negative 7. I run the gradient calculation and I got on it as 6. So a default formula for us to identify the gradient of a perpendicular line will be gradient of the original line multiplied with gradient of the perpendicular line, it will be equals to negative 1. So gradient of the perpendicular line equals to negative 1 divided by 6, so you will get negative 1 over 6. So y equals to negative 1 over 6x plus c and uses the information that goes by passes through point A. So substitute 3 and 5 into x and y's position. You will get your c as 11 over 2. So y equals to negative 1 over 6x plus 11 over 2. Question 18. So this is actually the upper bound and low bound question. So the keyword here is heated at correct to one decimal place as well as nearest second. So one decimal place, it will be 0 0.1 divided by two. So the rounding value for the distance part could be plus minus 0 0.05. As for correct to nearest second, it will be one divided by two. You will have plus minus 0 0.5. Five. So for speed, formula goes by distance over time. For us to get to the upper bound, our numerator must have more value, whereby our denominator, on the other hand, will actually be smaller. Okay, so that when they divide, you will get your maximum speed. So 146.2 add with 0 0.05, then it was being divided by 7 minus 0.5. The results for this should be 22.5 meter per second. Question 19a, this is also the newly added topic, is to ask you to sketch out the basic cosine graph. So nothing much, you can actually memorize this and this is roughly how it should look like. So the lowest point will be at 180, touches as negative 1. And the highest point, we have 2 here, which is when it's 0. And 360 degree. Part B is the tricky one. If you struggle to understand this topic in particular, I've actually made a video that you can search up at my video library. It's under the 
quadrant topic. So solve the equation for cosine x plus 2 equals to 3. So I rearranged everything and I gotten cosine x equals to 1 over 4. So this 1 over 4 is telling us that cosine must be in positive. So we will have results in the first and the fourth quadrant. And by keying in cosine inverse 1 over 4 into my calculator, I got my first results as 75.5. And for the other one that is located at the fourth quadrant, I will be using 360 minus 75.5. Then my next possible results will be 284.5. As for question 20, you can actually expand the x plus b bracket square where you will get x squared plus 2xb plus b squared. Then compare them accordingly. So your 2xb will equal to negative 12x. By running the calculation, you will get your b's results as negative 6. And our b squared here will be equal to a. So negative 6 squared equals to 36. So your A results will be 36 and your B will be negative 6. Question 21 here is also a tricky one where they change up the way how they usually ask you the vector question. So as you can see the syllabus has changed and they ask more structured question they assess you on your understanding instead of the usual question only. So write down two statements about the relationship between the point X, Y and Z. So the first thing that I noticed was ZY is actually twice the value of XY which indirectly hinting us that X is actually the midpoint of XY. The other thing that after you solve enough pass here, you should notice that x, y, z is actually on a straight line because of the collinear concept. So to prove this, I actually drawn the x, y, z's posi possible position okay, for your own illustration. So 2xy equals to 2 bracket 3a plus b. Okay, this will be 6a plus 4b. This is the workings to support my Question 1 statement. As for the graph on the other hand is to support the information that I have at part 2. So if you, even if you didn't include these two workings, you will still get the marks as long as your comments is valid. Okay, remember a couple of things that they are a couple of things that apply to all the question is when they are on the straight line, okay, skill factor will be involved, okay, and also either one of the points will be on the midpoint. So that's pretty much it for this paper. Generally, it wasn't that hard because a lot of the question is recycled to the core paper as well. Okay, just the newly added topic that you might be unfamiliar with. So practice more, then you eventually get better. If you have friends that are struggling, feel free to share this video to them and I wish you all the best in your upcoming examination. Thank you.